So let's just take a little more in depth of a look into what native VLANs are and how they operate. We know that how trunk lines operate is they send the information from switch to switch with the VLAN information, the VLAN ID tagged within the ethernet frame. So that way when the frame gets to the other switch, it can know what VLAN that ethernet frame is a part of. But what we can do is we can have one and only one of these VLANs that are being sent across here, we can have untagged. So what that means is, is that if I, I can have all of these different VLANs going across here, they're all tagged. And as long as I only have one VLAN that's untagged, this switch is going to know what VLAN that's a part of, provided that you program that both of these switches have the same native VLAN in place. So that's what a native VLAN is. It's just untagged traffic that's going across those ethernet lines. So what does that look like from an ethernet frame standpoint? Well, here's our 802.1Q defined ethernet frame with the tag traffic in there. And that can be sent across to the switch on the other side, knows what VLAN it's a part of. And the native VLAN, it just does not have that tag traffic in there. So essentially it's just like a regular ethernet frame that's sent across there. Now, the reason why you'd wanna have a native VLAN is for some legacy equipment or some older protocols that are communicating back and forth and those devices are not going to necessarily have tag traffic go, go across there. So this helps support some of those that legacy equipment. All right, so there you have it. So that's the native VLAN. Now this is a per link setting. And what that means is that every single one of these links could actually have a different native VLAN. I could do a native VLAN 10, a native VLAN 20, and a native VLAN 30 on each of these separate trunk lines. And it's going to operate just fine. Because what I'm doing is I'm actually configuring it on the interface. So I'm configuring it on each of these interfaces which allows me to configure each of these lines differently. Now, one thing you got to watch out for is what you would not want to do is you would not want to do a VLAN 2, native VLAN 2 on this side and a native VLAN 10 on this side because that can cause some problems. Now, your Cisco switches, if you have CDP running and some of the other protocols, they'll actually recognize that uh, you have a mismatch and it will identify it on the switch. Um, so that is helpful on these Cisco devices, but just generally speaking, you wouldn't want to uh, set up the wrong, uh, the wrong connections on there. So you'd want to set it up uh, the same on both of the sides, but as long as they're the same on the both sides, then that's going to be a per interface. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to have each one that is uh, each one of these trunk lines all the same. They're all programmed the same. That way it's easier for me to remember. And I also choose one that's not the same as any of my other VLANs, not the VLANs that I'm going to use. I just do that for an extra little bit of security there. And uh, so that way um, those are separated out and no one else can utilize that native VLAN. One thing to note on Cisco equipment is the default native VLAN is one. So if you don't specify something, then one is going to be the native VLAN on that device on all those interfaces. And the reason for that is because Cisco wants their devices for the most part to work outside. Once you unpack it and plug it in, they want it to work. And so one way they do that is set it up as the VLAN one is the native VLAN, and now you can start connecting in devices and they're just going to communicate 